Hey guys, today we are here with a very interesting and frequently asked question. How much protein is required for muscle growth? You might have heard different quantities of protein from different individuals or sources, but the reality is that the protein count is always different for different people, based on their diet, age, activity level, weight, and gender. So it is really important to have a clear-cut idea in mind before deciding on the exact portion. Let's ask who? According to the nutrition and dietetics experts working at the World Health Organization, the human body requires at least 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Simply a person weighing almost 70 kilograms needs a minimum of 55 to 60 grams of protein daily. But it does not end here. This protein is the minimum amount that is required to avoid muscle loss. Or in other words, if your protein intake is less than this amount you're going to look like a slender straw very soon. But if the aim is to cut, tone, shape, and structure the body, then you have to multiply the intake. Let's find out the different recommended protein intakes for different body goals. Belking According to a report by the American College of Sports and Medicine shortened as AXM, the average amount of protein for muscle bulking ranges from 1.5 to 2.1 grams per kilogram of your body weight. So if you're bulking at 75 kilograms, then you need to gel in at least 128 to 158 grams of protein in your daily diet along with carbs, fats, and other food items, which is comparatively less than the amount required for other body objectives. But why is that? To answer this question, we need to understand the procedure of bulking. Bulking is often associated with bodybuilders because of their gigantic bodies and superhuman physique. It is a process in which an individual consumes calories more than required to sustain the muscle tissues. And for that, the diet comprises different energy sources, like carbs, a lot of good fats, and, of course, protein. But because of the presence of other sources, protein is not the only food item on the list. So the spaces in the protein diet are filled with other forms of foods. Likewise, the ultimate weight gain diet is followed by intense training, which plays an important role in the process of bulking. This training breaks some of the glycogen reserves of the body while the rest of it, along with protein, multiplies the muscle tissue. So, in a nutshell, you can say that the protein portion of bulking diets is comparatively lower because of the presence of other nutrition sources in it. Now let's understand the retaining process. For retaining, the body has to burn daily fat and maintain the muscle tissue at the same time. So you may have to choose a protein efficient and caloric deficit diet side by side. And for that, you can use the same proportion of protein as bulking, just drop the carbs and fats from it. According to research by PubMed Central, the human body requires 1.7 to 2.1 grams of protein per kilogram of your body weight, or 0.66 to 0.90 grams per pound of the body weight to retain its original shape size and structure with moderate activity levels. Again, the workout plays an important role here. If you are not working out properly, you need less than 1 gram per kilogram of the body. Weight loss and cutting. Both weight loss and cutting falls in the same category of protein requirement as the process is very similar. In a weight loss diet, you have to cut down your fat portion by intense exercise while maintaining or increasing the muscle mass using the protein content. Equally, in cutting, the body has to lower its fat percentage by adhering to a strict diet plan to make the muscle mass more visible. So the outcome of both of the processes is the same. However, the startups may be different. For example, a person on a weight loss diet starts from being obese or bulky, but when you're at cutting, you're already fit and just require the muscle lining to become more visible. Equally, weight training is also different for both of the objectives. If you are losing weight, you can consume your diet and burn calories by running, jogging, and doing other forms of aerobic exercises. While to cut down the muscles, you have to be in the gym for most of your day and avoid cardio workouts. However, as the process is the same so the protein intake is also the same for both of them, but let's check out how much protein is required. According to the experts at WHO, the protein content for cutting or weight loss is relatively high than bulking and maintaining diets. Why? Because when you are cutting for losing weight, the diet has to be a strictly caloric deficit. So the carbs, fats, and glycogen portion of the food are already excluded up to 90%. 
and the only energy source left behind is protein. So you need more protein in cutting or losing weight to compensate for the loss of other food content. For the amount, experts suggest that it should vary between 2.2 to 2.8 grams per kilogram of the body. Let's understand the required protein intake for different factors. Activity Level For general weight loss aim, protein intake varies based on different activity levels. According to some fresh studies, a person on a weight loss or fat loss diet who is not active at all requires 1 gram to 1.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Equally for a person who is moderately active and works out once or twice a week, the protein intake should range from 1.4 to 1.8 grams per kilogram of the body. And for those people who are very active and work out at least 5 times a week, the protein intake should range from 1.8 to 2.6 grams based on the type of exercise they do. For weight training, the protein intake can be a little bit less but for athletic exercises like running, jogging, and jumping the protein intake should be increased as compared to the other forms of workout because there is a greater risk of muscle loss involved in cardiovascular exercises. Gender and Age Now let's talk about gender and age. The protein intake also varies for different age groups and genders. Males require comparatively more proteins than females. And the reason is very simple. Because of the bigger and bulkier bodies, the male physique needs more protein for muscle growth and sustainability. Additionally, strength is the main part of a male body so to maintain that you have to eat more proteins. So if we talk about the numbers, an average male on a weight loss diet working out 2 to 3 times a week requires 1.7 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Likewise, a female with an average workout routine requires at least 0.8 to 1.4 grams of protein per kilogram of the body. However, for athletic women who have a sort of intense workout routine, the protein intake should vary from 1.4 to 1.9 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Talking about the age group, it is very important to know that people above 50 years of age require more protein than younger individuals because their body mass starts dissolving and to compensate that they have to send more protein to their system. So an average 50-year-old requires at least 1.8 to 2.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. However, this quantity also depends upon the activity level and gender. Diet Height plays a really important role in deciding protein intake. And for that is simple yet very interesting research of an American health scientist and PhD. Researcher Dr. Eric Helms published a study in which he claimed that obese individuals can simply eat one gram of protein per one centimeter of their height. For example, if you are 180 centimeter tall you need 180 grams of protein per day. And this surprisingly worked, especially for those people who were high in body fat and had moderate activity levels. Now let's find out how much protein you need or you can handle before going to bed. Protein intake before bed. Protein intake before bed is always a common question and people are interested in knowing that either they should take protein before bed or how much they should go for and what's the science behind it, etc. So let's answer the first question. Is it good to have protein before bed? The simple answer is yes. Various scientific studies have proved that drinking quality protein for going to bed can pace up muscle growth and recovery and can also enhance the quality of sleep. How much you should go for? In a recent study, experts found out that consuming 20% of the daily required protein before going to bed can multiply muscle growth, strength, and endurance. In another study, a figure of 40 grams was tossed and it was claimed that the human body can handle it while sleeping. What's the science behind it? Well as we all know that all muscle growth and recovery occur when you sleep because sleep is the anabolic activity of the body. So supplying protein at that time when the body is just going to enter the recovery phase will give extra fuel to the anabolic system and it performs surprisingly well. So are you going to start consuming protein from today? Which of these points were helpful to you? Do share your thoughts in the comments. Stay safe and we will meet you in the next one.